is of heaven and Thank you all so much for being here with me this precious moment at this precious time. It is an honor and actually quite astonishing since almost exactly 22 years ago, I was murdered in a little teeny tiny town called Hart, Michigan, kneeling in a field of purple wildflowers, waiting to go into the biggest women's music festival. It was my last bash before medical school. But instead, five white boys in a big white truck came to check out the dikes and saw me. And the aerial photos from the police report showed that they turned their tires right to me and never tried to stop. A hate crime in Hart, Michigan. And as their truck smashed into me and I was being dragged 86 feet on a gravel dirt road, I remember rolling underneath the truck thinking, wow, this is an intense dream. I gotta remember this when I wake up. And I got lodged between the tire and the exhaust pipe and my flesh started cooking. Oh, and while my flesh was cooking, Yale, Yaluma, I was in a place that was timeless and formless and out of space. Yale, Homiale, Yagbaomio, all these little orbs started pulling this luminescent gauze off of my body. And I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. I can't die out here. My mother will kill me if I die out here. Oh, no, 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 no. And all my childhood Catholic school upbringing came out. I was like, I haven't been to confession in eons. I lied about my weight on my driver's license. Does that count? Oh, my God. And then I remembered from Flash Gordon. Y'all remember that movie from the 70s, honey? There was a scene where the good guy was going to die. And the only way that he could prevent death was to sing. So I started trying to sing in my body. And I couldn't think of anything. And I just kept floating out of my body wrapper out into the vastness of the beyond. And I remember thinking, whoa, this is incredible. I'm in connecting to all the electrons and the protons, all the molecules. I am everything and everything is me. Yale, omi ale, ayagba omiyo. And I started floating towards the setting sun. And the minute I started feeling like, ah, I could get used to this, suddenly, Superheroes come in, honey. Flash Gordon! Then that setting sun became a crack of light as the truck was being raised off me by these three little teeny tiny women that were Wonder Women with the five villains still in the truck. One Wonder Woman ran off to call on a payphone. Y'all don't remember payphones, you're too young, but she had to run to a payphone five miles, call an ambulance, and finally the ambulance came and choppered me off to Butterworth Hospital. And after years, of surgeries and physical therapy and hospital stays, I am able to be here with you alive. Hey! And that's a precious moment, baby. That's right. And I got to give it up for the superheroes that saved me that day on that field in those hospitals and around the world with their prayers and their songs and their love. And I also have to give it up to the superhero that I had to find in me, because trust me, honey, this fabulousness did not come presto changeo. Third degree burns are no joke. You know, the Journal of American Medical Association says that third degree burns are the most excruciating type of pain, not only because of the burn itself, but because of the treatment that you have to get. The scraping and the scrubbing and the bleeding and the debreeding, nothing, no opiate could quell that pain except music. Music lifted me up and took me back to that vast beyond, took me out of my crumpled, mangled body wrapper and reminded me of the peace that I felt when I was out there. And so I was able in that hyper-focused hypnotic state to rise above the pain. And let me tell you, I could heal myself from the inside while they healed me on the outside. And I was raised in a family of physicians and scientists, so I know the power of advocating for yourself as a patient. But it wasn't until a doctor talked over me to another doctor, like I was a corpse on the table, that I realized the power of my voice and how much that truly mattered. So everything had a tube in it, honey. Tubes, tubes, tubes. 
These two fingers worked, so I put them to work. I demanded a piece of paper and a pen, and I started writing on this paper. Let me tell me my hematocrit level. Let me see my x-rays. Because I knew that I had to be a part of my own healing. And so every day I would be in that music, healing, healing. And every day the doctors would come in and go, what in the, we can't believe how much you've healed. And so I vowed that day from that lonely abyss of pain that the minute I got out of that hospital bed slash wheelchair slash crutches slash cane slash slash slash, that I would travel the world and help everybody else who was in the same lonely abyss of pain out of that through music. Music was what saved me. And once you have gone into the beyond and seen the vastness, all of the dividing conversations about the ists and the isms about the differences of our body wrappers, the size, the shape, the texture, the dimples, pimples, wrinkles, crinkles, color, all of that, those things, the ists and the isms become atrocious, hilarious and heinous all at once. And so we have to rise above that conversation. That's the idea we're spreading. Get out above that. Tap into your bigger self. Be bigger than the way you currently view yourselves, the way you currently view me, the way you currently view the world. Tap into your inner superpower. I dare you. I double dare you. And as a kid, if somebody double dared you, you had to do it. You had to do it. So I double dare you to be dauntless, to be fearless, to be your own superhero. What will it take? A cape? A mask? a fabulous super head wrap, a wand, an incantation, splendiferous actionatum there. Now, go out into the world and be superheroes. What would it take? Mine was a super vow. I vowed to the energies that saved me that day and all those years afterwards that I would take all of my energy armed with music and love and travel the world and help people with my superpower, which was song. And so I formed ICASI, and that stands for the International Cultural Arts and Healing Sciences Institute. And what we do is we partner with local artists and educators and healers nationally and internationally, like with the United Nations and embassies around the world, to work with at-risk children, youth, and families in war-ravaged countries or impoverished areas to help heal by remembering who they be through the arts and education. And I have gone all over the world. I've gone through America, I've gone through the Caribbean, I've gone through Europe and Asia and Africa. But over the past seven years, I've traveled to Lebanon, Jordan, Syria. I've traveled to Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan. Ooh, all these good sounding words. And I've seen the most beautiful places and the most beautiful people. And they're so beautiful because of their strength, their courage, and their resilience. And there's not enough time to share all the stories with you, but I'm going to share you a few, with you a few of the superheroes that I met. I was in Lebanon, and I met this beautiful refugee family with this mother who was very distressed about her daughter who had severe cerebral palsy. And there were medicine bottles strewn all over the house. And you know, you could hear this moaning and wailing in the corner, and the mother was trying to tell us that she was having so much trouble buying medicine. Could we help her? And I just kept being drawn to the cries from the corner in the crib, and it was her daughter who was 11 years old, and she was clearly distressed, and she was moaning and groaning. And so I, I said, Ana ya habibi, habibi eli. And she stopped moaning. And she smiled. And the mother jumped up like a mama bear. She ran over and she scooped up her daughter and started rocking her and crying and saying, you made her smile, you made her smile. It's been so long since she smiled. That was music. Music as the great healer made her smile. This is Salima. I met Salima in Syria with her husband Daoud, who was uh, suffering from untreated diabetes and post-traumatic stress disorder. And she kept apologizing because her apartment was so dark, there was no electricity, and she had no tea or food to offer us. 
And I could tell from her steely exterior that she was in so much pain. And so I asked her to share a story with us, and she said, I have no memories, only sadness. And so I said, And her face started to crack. And she started to look like she was trying to keep it together. So I started singing stronger. And she grabbed her chest. And she started to wail. And she started to cry. And I held her and rocked her. Because she started to remember that she remembered her children and her grandchildren that were still in Iraq, who she can't find, she can't talk to them, she doesn't know if they're alive or dead. She remembered the dates from the palm trees that are now gone from her neighborhood. She remembered the songs and the dances and the traditions that are lost, the cultural erasure, a byproduct of war. But in that moment, as I held her and cried with her, she felt heard and seen, and she could remember and start to heal. That is the superpower of song. This is Fakir. He's the one in the middle. And I met him right after I sang at a refugee camp for children. And he saw me, and I saw him, and his daughter saw me, and I saw her. And we were all kind of looking at each other, and I'm playing the drum. I'm like, what's going on? I didn't realize that they were dark-skinned black Iraqis. I had no idea. And so after I finished, he came running up to me, and his daughter came running up to me. Oh, please, 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 you have to come and meet my family. So I had to do a little finagling with my folk over here, the United Nations. I was like, can we switch it up and go over here? So we did. We followed him home. I met his family. That's his wife, his children. And he kept saying to me, I used to be a hero. I used to be a hero. And I didn't know what he was talking about. So I asked him to explain further. And he said, I can't tell the story in front of my children. They have to leave. And so his children left, and he said, I used to be a hero with tears in his eyes. And apparently, he used to be a famous boxer in Iraq. But when the war started, the militia started torturing him so badly, they tore out his fingernails and burnt his hands that he can't make a fist anymore. But he can paint. So he paints, and he makes tile work, and he teaches his children to paint. And he didn't realize it until after our conversation that now he's the hero for his children and the children in the neighborhood, teaching them how to draw, express themselves, make toys out of soap. That's the power of the arts as expression. And I have to tell you that this last story I'm going to share with you, when I was in Palestine, it was the Palestinian Idol, honey. It was the first one they ever had. The embassy decided that would be cool to do, right? It sounds cool. So they whittled down thousands of contestants down to like 10 kids under the age of 17. And they shipped me in about a month earlier so that I could teach them you know, how to be present and not lose their voice and you know, do fun things like dance for the audience. And uh, it was the last day of the show. And the little boy, who was one of the contestants, the one who's singing now, came and sat down next to me and said, sit on me. Sit means ma'am. Can you teach me how to speak nigger? <laughs> I'd sit down, honey. I was like, what? And I come from a really proud black activist family. We lived on the hill, so we marched in every march, honey, rain, sleet, snow. So I had to not do my pre-programmed response, which was, was to shut it down and tell him all about himself. I had to remember in my compassionate teacher self that he was from Palestine, and he was a little boy, and he just wanted to know. So I said, let me ask the bigger question. What is it that you mean, baby? He said, you know, my nigger, my nigger, hippity hoppity. I said, oh, <laughs> you want to rap? OK, that's another story. We can talk about that. But you know, it was one of the most profound moments of the trip, because another one of his friends came over, another contestant, sat down and was like, sit on me. You teach me how to drum instead of bomb. Now I want to drum instead of bomb. 
That's the power of music. That's the power of expression. Being able to be free to talk like that in a place, in a space where there aren't eggshells all over the floor. And I am not liberated from cultural faux pas. Let me tell you something, this is my last story. You see this man, the Dalai Lama? He asked me to sing for him. And so I went to India, and I was so excited, and it was the last note of the last song. And I stood up there and I said, hey, Baba Dalai Lama. And this field of beautiful Tibetans all surrounding this giant golden Buddha statue started cracking up, ha, ha. And my eyes were closed, so I was like, what's going on? I opened my eyes, I was like, doggone it, I missed it. The Dalai Lama's cracking up on his throne. I was like, oh man, what happened? All of a sudden, they all come running up to me, started squeezing my cheeks. Oh, we love when you call him daddy. <laughs> what? I called the Dalai Lama daddy. Oh my gosh, I didn't know I did that. And what I didn't realize was that in their culture, Baba means daddy, and nobody over three says Baba to anybody. Now, in Africa and other cultures, Baba means great teacher. And so luckily, when he's putting that scarf over my head, he says, I'll be your daddy. And I was like, oh, woo, the Dalai Lama spoke daddy. <laughs> it was spectacular. But his spirit, his heart was open enough to allow that to happen. Helen Keller said the most beautiful things. She said, the most beautiful things in the world are not things that can be seen or heard or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And this little girl who knew I was coming to her country said, I need you to sing this song. I wrote it for you to sing to your president and everyone that you meet. And this is what she said. We are children of earth and the starry heaven. Our race is of heaven and What is freedom? What is right? You are all superheroes. So I dare you to be dauntless, to go out into the world and be inspired by the world and be inspiring for the world. I double dare you. Thank you so much.